Hello, and welcome to CMMI Tech Talk. In this video, we will do a deep dive into an element of the CMMI model. This practice area deep dive is intended to follow our previous discussion of the Supplier Agreement Management, or SAM, practice area. Previously, we examined the practices in levels one to three of SAM. In this session, we are going to look at the level four content. The practice summary table shows there is only one practice at level four, practice 4.1. The practice statement for this practice states, select measures and apply analytical techniques to quantitatively manage suppliers against their performance targets. SAM 4.1 shares the principle common across high maturity practices of using data analysis to help us improve performance. In SAM 4.1, we are now looking at how we can use that data to apply analytical techniques to manage our supplier's performance. Why is this so important? Because at high maturity, we are optimizing our performance and the work performed by a supplier is often a significant contributory component. The value statement provides us with a good perspective into how we may achieve this performance improvement enhances supplier performance by focusing attention on the most critical areas for success. This perspective makes us question what areas of a supplier's performance are critical to our success. So to begin this process, we need to identify what success means for us. At level three, we examine SAM 3.2, which relates to selecting aspects of supplier performance to manage that are of consequence to us. For example, these may pose significant risk to the achievement of our goals. So SAM 3.2 helps directly with this question. Even at level three, this often involves determining what aspects of our performance are important to our customers and may be measured. If our customers demand that we deliver on time, all the time, anything that affects our ability to do so becomes critical to our success. Similarly, if we pride ourselves on delivering the best quality products, eliminating defects from our development and production processes is critical to our success. If we operate in a price competitive market with tight margins, then controlling costs might be the difference between making a profit or going out of business. It is easy to see from this that a supplier who delivers late threatens our ability to maintain delivery milestones. Correspondingly, a poor quality supplier component may impact the quality experience by the customer or delay our delivery dates, and large price fluctuations for supplied standard components may make our product uncompetitive. So with that information, Understanding what outcomes we are trying to achieve is a necessary first step in addressing SAM 4.1. As we have seen, the SAM 3.2 practice provides the basis for evaluating this. But what is the difference between a level three approach and a level four approach? Let us look at two areas where they differ. The first is about how we specify what we are trying to achieve. At levels four and five in general, this is often defined using quality and process performance objectives or QPPOs for short. These QPPOs are linked to the quantitative business objectives we need to achieve. This is reflected in the additional required information for SAM 4.1. In particular, the second paragraph highlights that the acquirer must statistically or quantitatively manage their own internal processes or the supplier processes and solutions in conjunction with the supplier when the quality and process performance objective, the QPPO, requires it. Defining specific QPPOs is not about expressing a wish of what we want to achieve, but instead based on the historical capability of the process. This means we must collect data to establish process performance baselines or PPBs. We can then use these process performance baselines to establish realistic performance targets to model what we expect to happen and to compare with current results to ascertain whether recent behavior is in line with our expectations. 
The second difference in behavior between level 3 and level 4 is in determining the relationship between some aspects of supplier performance and the outcomes we want to achieve. At level 3, we may do this qualitatively. Organizations operating in a level 4 manner will do this statistically by determining the measured aspect of the supplier performance and an outcome of importance that impacts a QPPO. For example, at level 3, we may intuitively determine that the speed with which suppliers answer technical questions in an engineering project may have an impact on one's own ability to meet milestones. But at level four, we can confirm that there is a correlation between these two parameters and we can also quantify the magnitude of the effect. So, understanding the variation in a supplier's performance and how this may impact our own ability to achieve organizational or project-related QPPOs is really at the heart of SAM 4.1. We want to establish process performance baselines that demonstrate the expected range of variation for key supplier performance attributes. Using control charts, we can then use these baselines to check current behavior and determine if the supplier is performing within the expected statistical range. We can also use the baselines to help plan our work with our suppliers by using the baselines in our statistical modeling activities. In some instances, we can even use the baselines to help in selecting the most suitable supplier using the baselines in our modeling activities to find the most probable outcomes from different project scenarios using different suppliers. Ultimately, establishing these baselines means that we need to collect data over time. For the technical questions example on a simple level, we may collect data on the amount of time that occurs between sending an information request and receiving the answer. Building up enough data to construct a statistically significant baseline may be challenging if our number of requests in an individual project or with an individual supplier is relatively low. Initially, we may need to consider aggregating data from across multiple projects and several suppliers to establish overall process performance baselines. This is an appropriate starting point. As more data becomes available, we can establish supplier-specific baselines. As an illustration, let us examine the case of Company X. This software development company produces regular upgrades of a standard software tool for its customers. One element of the software is built around an outsourced software component. However, this element needs updating each time the Company X tool is updated. The time that the supplier requires to update this outsourced component varies significantly, and the Company X management also feel that there are quality-related issues emerging as well. The Company X process group decided to investigate and collected the data from the last 60 updates. A quick analysis reveals that the supplier response time is on average 14.6 days with a standard deviation of 5.48. Conducting an Anderson-Darling test confirms the data appears to be normally distributed. The process group decides to see if there is any correlation between the number of days taken to respond and the quality of the product. They collect test data associated with the 60 updates and determine which defects were classified as supplier-related errors. First, the process group created a scatter plot to determine if there was any potential correlation. The scatter plot revealed what appears to be a correlation. They then performed a regression analysis with the response time and associated numbers of supplier defects to ascertain if there is a relationship between how long the supplier takes to respond and the number of defects ascribed to the supplier's work. After discussion of these findings with the senior management, it is decided they will use this data to establish a baseline for the update response time and use this baseline to manage the supplier's performance. Using the data from the initial 60 data points, an XMR chart is created to establish the baseline. A couple of anomalies were identified and investigated. However, the data was deemed sufficiently stable and was used to establish an initial QPPO for the update response days. The QPPO was set as less than 29 days. 
This would maintain the current level of performance with the associated impacts on the organization's delivery times and quality levels. However, reviewing the regression data, the senior managers indicate that they would like to improve this performance to 21 days. In this case, the organization had data specific to an individual supplier. However, it is not unusual for an organization to use aggregated baselines at an early stage. These can enable us to establish generic performance needs and manage all relevant suppliers against these. As we collect more data, supplier-specific baselines often emerge. This provides us with two advantages. We can more closely manage the performance of an individual supplier and understand where results show they are deviating from their usual performance. Secondly, we can use the baselines in our modeling to help choose the supplier that best fits with the performance needs of the work we are doing. Of course, if there is a new potential supplier, we need data for their performance. In this case, the default baseline using aggregated data may have to be used. In addition, we should be careful that this situation does not entrench existing suppliers in an unassailable position and we never end up choosing new suppliers. Remember that models and data are tools to inform our decision-making, not a straitjacket that limits our options. Often the old assumptions that underline a model also change, so existing data and models will periodically need adjusting. But also, this does not mean we should ignore the models just because we think we need a change. Collecting what data we can and clearly articulating our risks, assumptions, and unknowns will enable us to use modeling sensibly to address these challenges. So the overall key to understanding CM 4.1 is statistically managing supplier performance starts with understanding what we want to achieve and then determining what we need our suppliers to be good at to help us succeed. We establish QPPOs for our success, and by extension, we will need QPPOs for our supplier's performance relevant to that QPPO. Process performance baselines, PPBs, for individual supplier performance may not be available, so aggregated baselines from multiple suppliers can be used initially. Don't let the predominance of data for established suppliers crowd out new potential suppliers. Use modeling and data wisely to facilitate our decision-making processes. Thank you for joining us for this CMMI Tech Talk. If you have questions, please contact us at support.isaka.org.